<laughs> I have the biggest smile on my face right now. I, just, I, I love this scene so much. Okay, it's time for Estelle's Great Escape. Let's move it. So, first thing to do is to head through here. And if you're ever a bit lost, you can check the map. So, those four doors over on the top hallway, we've been through all of them already. But on the bottom hallway, there are still some places that we haven't been to yet. Most of these rooms just contain uh, vogels, but there is one room with a chest here. This one right here. Tyrell Balm. I don't know what you expected. Well, I kind of expected some guards, so... Guess you subverted them. My expectations, I mean. And as I can... Yep, there's nothing in any of the other rooms, so yeah, that's pretty much fine. So this is where that door that Ren wouldn't let us through leads to. And that there leads up to the sanctuary, but that's a dead end, and we need a voice print to get that way anyway, so... No reason to go there. It's time to head on through here. Fortunately, this elevator works just fine without the voice print identification. I'm not really sure why, but it does. And here we are in the Forecastle first floor. This place looks pretty confusing, but if you maybe draw up a map based on those, uh, like, map indicators there, it might be a little easier to navigate. That thing looks pretty scary, but, um... We can't actually do anything about it, because there's an electric barrier in the way. Now, if you touch these, you actually do gradually lose HP, so don't do that. Let's head up these stairs. Hi there, Vogel. In fact, I should probably take off... I have scent on her, don't I? Yeah, I should, I should get rid of that for now. Let's replace that with yin-yang for the time being. And, uh, yeah, port seekers. They're basic enemies now. Oh, also, uh, we've now changed this song, which is pretty great. <laughs> they hit kind of hard, but the enemies in this area are relatively balanced for a single-person party, so you don't need to worry too much here. So the map did say there was a single room here, and in here there are three chests. EP charge. It's a vase! It's a pot! No, it's super chest! Uh, all things that Link regularly demolishes. Yes, including chests, if you count Breath of the Wild. As you look into the darkness of the empty chest, it reminds you of the darkness that fills your heart. Uh, that message was meant for Luve, not for us. And in here we get Vajra. This chest remembers your previous visit and is none too happy to see you return. Uh, the Vajra usually shows up as some kind of ultimate dagger in a lot of games. It is based on uh, a kind of Buddhist um, thing. You can look those up. But here... Uh, it, um, prevents Seal and Mute. Actually not that useful where we're going. And another barrier. So, this place might seem confusing, but the barriers pretty much funnel you exactly where you need to go, so it's not really all that bad. So as you can see here, there's a barrier, and we would have run into this barrier uh, if we had tried um, going the other stairs. Oh, hi, Port Seeker. Aha! You exposed your rear to me! That why not? Let's use Dark Matter. Just to be different. <laughs> Gravity Squeeze! As Magneto from Marvel vs. Capcom 3 would say. No, they drop EP Charge 2s, which is pretty nice of them. <laughs> so yeah, I, I intentionally did that. You don't actually have to activate the barriers, but if you activate four of them, you get that pretty funny dialogue. So I wanted to make sure to show that at least once. 
So through here, and across this bridge, we're on the other side of that barrier, and from here we can come down these stairs, and over here, and we can't get to where that big robot is because there's a barrier in the way, as they tend to do. We can go up here though, get on the other side of that barrier, for a room with a chest. Misty Veil. There's nothing in this chest, but you look so excited to open it that I didn't have the heart to tell you earlier. I already, um, well, kind of had the heart to remove the Misty Veil from other party members earlier, so I don't need that. But if you didn't get the Misty Veil before, now's your chance to grab it. Okay, through here... This will lead us outside. the very top of the glorious. <laughs> Basically, we got to commandeer ourselves a lifeboat. Now, before we proceed any further, you want to make sure of a few things. One, it might not be a terrible idea to fight some Vogels and recharge Estelle's CP to 200. Oh yeah, these things can sound the alarm and summon more of uh, more Vogels. Man, there are those weird arts they use. Never got to see them before. It's just bog standard plasma wave. Okay, there we go. CP is now at maximum. After that, you obviously want to fully heal yourself and fully recharge your your EP. So let's do that. And in terms of equipment, the Grail Locket is good, but I want to use the Buzzer because it will buff ATS. And on my other slot, I will use that on the Emergency Puppet that we got from a file transfer at the very beginning of the game. If you don't have that, a Proxy Puppet will suffice, but this is why I've saved my Emergency Puppet until now. We also have uh, the ATS boosting slippers, the Misty Veil for more ATS. On our Orbment, we're going to want uh, probably Sense, actually. Most of this stuff we won't really need, but the main thing here is Death Scream. In terms of battle position, we probably want to be further back. And now... We're going to cook as many Perilous... Not Perilous. We're going to cook as many Knockout Meatballs as we possibly can. Which it turns out is only 15. But let's go ahead and do that. 900 Strength and 100% Chance of Fate. Okay, I'm out of curative horns, that's why I can't make more of those. Any excess ingredients you might want to spend on naptime cookies. So we have a lot of naptime cookies, a lot of knockout meatballs, full CP, death scream, emergency puppet, and buzzer. You also want to save right now. Reason B. We're about to get to what is the equivalent of FC's Lawrence fights. A fight that you don't have to win, but winning is worth bonus BP and an achievement. And winning this fight is actually pretty difficult because it's an Estelle solo fight. And we'll be facing multiple enemies, and they can inflict fate, which is why we have the buzzer. This battle on the higher difficulties is kind of a matter of luck. They're not immune to death blow, which is why death screen can help, but because it's like multiple enemies against one, they can easily just destroy you with multi turns. But let's go.
Yeah, you always keep saying that. This is the guy who was at the mine who left those Vogels for us. He seems to know us, but who is he? So, as funny as it is to choose who again, this is actually worth bonus BP, so you need to make sure to choose this. So, this, believe it or not, is probably the most plot-significant thing to come out of the Mayor Dalmore arc. Yeah, Dalmore himself was kind of a filler villain, but his secretary, Gilbert, has joined Ouroboros now. Yeah, just as the Sky Bandits escaped, so did you. I feel like you didn't so much pledge your allegiance as you got down on your knees and begged them not to kill you. Yeah, we heard about some of those on the computers at the lab. <laughs> yeah, Gilbert is to Ouroboros the friend nobody likes. Oh, you know, like you did when Ouroboros found you, most likely. <laughs> so... This is that fight. The fight that you have to win for bonus BP, but winning is not required. That can inflict faint if you're not immune to it, so be careful of that. Okay, I have a crit turn. I suppose I could show their stats while I'm here. We have the enhanced Jaegers who wield great swords, and yes, they can revive each other. There's also a turn limit on this battle, by the way. And we also have Jaeger Gilbert. Talk's a big game, but a bit clueless, really. So, knockout meatball. I can only catch two of them in this, unfortunately. We're good to go. But yeah, the guaranteed feint is incredibly useful. That being said, I might still lose this. Their accuracy is a little bad, but if this one hits... I can use the Emergency Puppet, which does fully recharge my CP, which is annoying because I probably should have um, used that earlier. Okay, do I go for... Like, I have my S-Craft, I mean. Do I go for Death Scream, or do I go for another one of these? I think I'm going to go for Death Scream. Like I said earlier, these things are not immune to death blow, so spamming death scream is pretty much your main way of winning this fight. Oh, and Gilbert's already down. That's kind of unfortunate. Because his voice acting is hilarious. It's it's seriously amazing. Whoever voiced him, and from all sources, I think it's Bryce Papenbrook who voiced Gilbert. 
whoever voiced him clearly had a lot of fun. But let's see, I'm gonna have to refresh Jelly myself. Ugh. Yeah, this is kind of bad. Can I get you all in a nap time here? Yes, I can. Yeah, guaranteed sleep from those is also extremely useful. In fact, provided that you're all in the area for this, which you actually aren't, but I can do this, and that I can S break the last one. Okay, it did cost me my emergency puppet, and that was a little clumsy, but I did do that on my first try, so that's actually kind of, uh, decently impressive on hard mode, I will say. Because as you can see, that was, that was pretty tough. And if you don't cook that attack food, this fight is nearly impossible on the high difficulties. You need that faint and sleep. It's basically either that or spam Death Scream. Those are the only two viable strategies. つもりなんだ。声優劇師になったのに相変わらず無鉄砲とはね。あの場で異常張るメリットが一体どこにあるって言うんだ。よしあだ。えっと、夢じゃないよね。<笑> 夢だったらどんなに気楽でいいだろうけどね。どうやらそんなに都合よくはいかないみたいだ。え。ようやく姿を現したか。久しぶり、レイベ。僕が潜入していたことを予想していたみたいだね。お前の能力を考えれば十分
僕と君を合わせたよりもそれが分かっていながらお前はこの場に現れたわけだ別にそのことを甘いというつもりはないがならばどうしてお前はその娘の前から姿を消した<笑>守るなら守る切り捨てるなら切り捨てるそう徹底しろと俺はお前に教えたはずだなうんそうだね教授の調整が終わった直後初めての訓練で教えてくれた本当にその娘が大事ならお前は消えるべきではなかった罪悪感に苛まれながらもそばに居続けるべきだったお前がそうしなかったのはただの逃避欺瞞に過ぎん分かってるレーベに言われなくてもそんなの分かっているさ<笑>よしやでもだったらレーベはどうなの本当なら僕だけが払うべき代償だったはずなのに結社に入って検定なんて呼ばれてどうして今も教授なんかに協力しているのさ<笑>俺が教授に協力するのはお前の件とは一切関係ないあくまで俺自身の望みのためだレーベの望みそれってやっぱりカリン姉さんの<笑>復讐してもカリンが戻ってくるわけではないだから俺はこの世を試すことにしたそれが教授に協力する理由だこの世を試すさておしゃべりはここまでだお前の選択肢は3つある娘と共に登校するか娘を守ってここで果てるか娘を見捨てて一人逃れるかさあ選ぶがいいよよっしゃ<笑>悪いけど四つ目の選択肢を選ばせてもらうよ何なこれは動力機関に再興させてもらった放っておいたらこの船は海の木図と化すだろうねああんですってやってくれたなまさか認証が必要な機関部に侵入するとは22機のエンジン全てに異なる仕掛けを施している教授や連たちがいない今解除できるのはレーベだけだ計画を阻止するための最後の切り札というわけかそれをこのタイミングで切ってしまうという意味その欺瞞からいつまで逃げるつもりだ<笑><笑>今度会う時までに答えを用意しておくがいい楽しみにしているぞ<笑>あのよしは私私話は後だ脱出用の飛行艇を一席確保しておいたこの先の階段を降りて戦争の格納庫を目指そううん分かった No time for reunions now and well this is kind of appropriate let's heal up Estelle with Joshua here Joshua is mostly the same as from when we left him back in the prologue to chapter 4. He still got a lot of really good quartz in his ornaments. But we can give him some accessories if we want. Let's see. Uh, how about we give him the Vajra? Seems to have some undocumented stat boost on it. And may how about the Grail Locket? Okay, let's go. So here we are uh, in the stern first floor, and here we are, yeah, this area can be a little bit confusing. Also, weirdly enough, they put a heal point here after the Gilbert fights. You really could have used this before, but no, they had to put it afterwards. 
So, uh, as usual, barriers in the way. We can't get through there. Okay, so we gotta head south this time. And you know what? Why not show off Joshua? I said earlier that Kevin was the first one to learn Chain 3. That's if you don't count Joshua, who starts out with it. I'm not really sure Joshua, like, like what level Joshua would have learned that. Because he starts out at level 75, which is way later than Kevin learns Chain 3. I really don't care about being spotted at this point. Everything will fall before us. And yeah, Joshua gets like nothing from battles because he's already so overpowered. Okay, so yeah, in this area there's really nothing much for us to do except go in this room and grab ourselves Star Rabbits. Were you hoping somebody would come along and put in more stuff for you to take? Okay, now that I have that... We can now head over this bridge to the northern part of the stern first floor. And yeah, that way is blocked. That's where we would have gone if um, we tried to take the first stairs, and that way is blocked too. Like I said, the electric barriers kind of funnel you where you need to go. And we have a monster chest here. With a whole ton of enemies and we're actually kind of low on health, but um, hmm. Yeah, let's just um... So let's heal before facing this one. Okay, uh, Joshua has pretty much all of his original crafts, but I'm gonna actually go for Death Scream here. And yet another thing that has Bullet Barrage. Okay, I haven't actually shown what these things are. These are the vanguards that were mentioned back in the laboratory. Made by the 13 factories. Oh, and yes, they can self-destruct, so don't be too close to them when um, they are about to die. They do look pretty cool, though. Like, I've always liked the way that, the, that those particular mechs look. And this should finish off those two. Okay, good. Who does the crit turn go to, though? Well, that's not good. Analyzing combat data. Well, let's flicker you with this critical. Aha! Delay actually does work on you. Nice. And let's see if True Comet can finish you. No, not at all. Uh, yeah. Estelle's weapon right now is not that great. I, I could have bought a better weapon for her back at Bows, but I decided to have her focus more on arts in this segment. That's that. Let's move out. And that level up was very well timed. Estelle needed to recharge her EP. Oh, and speaking of which, yeah, Estelle now gets a better weapon, so hopefully she can actually do damage to things at this point. Wear good shoes and you'll never see defeat. And nowhere else to go but uh, through here. Another uh, area that's blocked off. And we can go down this bridge, which will lead us onto the other side of this barrier. And here, yeah, nothing here, just the other side of that barrier. But good to know where this all links up. There may have been some other chests back there that I missed. No, that's going to lead downstairs. Yeah, that's a lot more damage. Thank you for that uh, tiny bit of seepeth and the insulating tape. That should be everything here. And yet another heal point. Again, we really could have used one of these before Gilbert, but no. So we're on this side of the stern first floor.
Let's keep going deeper. Because this area is the stern second floor. And we can't access any of those panels, so they're conveniently not marked on our map. And this is now a regular enemy encounter, but we don't really need to bother fighting it. All we need to do here is to head to the southern portion. Oh, hi, Port Seekers. Well, guess what? We have Joshua now. Yeah, how do you like that? That's that. Let's move out. And no way through there, but we do have a chest in here for Proxy Puppet. You don't understand how hard it is to come up with 500 unique treasure chest phrases that are brewing with sarcasm. Okay, back through here. Can't even go through that way. We can get over this bridge, though. Going north again. And in here gets us a whole bunch of seepeth, which we'll be needing very, very soon. Say, have we met before? Eh, not really. Unless Joshua saw you when he was on the Glorious during his time as an enforcer. Yeah, these bridges are really confusing, by the way. <laughs> but through here... Port Seeker. We can get down these stairs. And that entire winding path was just to get us on the other side of the stern. Which leads to the elevator to the hangar. And yet another heal point, they're really excessive with these. But the hang is pretty simple. Though you may want to save before you head in here, and in terms of tactics, uh, Joshua's a little bit more fragile. I think I'll actually put him a bit further back. You don't really want to be um, too close together for this one. You want to be a bit spread out, because we're going to be dealing with some area attacks. As you can probably tell, there is a fight through here. Love the way this place looks, though. And I also like the choice of music for this. This boss theme was originally used for the Abyss Worms, but it actually makes a pretty good escape song. Yeah, I guess you remember all those facts from your time here. So, here we go. Oh, yeah, there are still, um, mechs patrolling this corridor, but... Unless Estelle is very close to leveling up, which let me check. Nah, she's still pretty far off. Let's just ignore you. Here we go.
remember, Campanella is not actually part of the gospel plan, so he can kind of do whatever he wants here. They sent all of the others out, but that left him still available to guard the ship. Half decade sounds impressive, but it is only five years. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation about Campanella. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's the reason. <laughs> Oh, now you're just trying to make Estelle hit you. So, he's not going to fight us, but that doesn't mean he can't summon a bunch of helicopters to attack us. Or, like, mechanized drone helicopters, basically. These things are unmanned. They are entirely Archaisms. <laughs> 